Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a very quick update on the 2020 AP Computer Science exam uh, from the College Board. So as you know, due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, which has uh, been spreading across the country and um, the world, there have been a lot of changes that the College Board has made to a lot of their exams. They've canceled some of the recent SATs, um, as well as uh, some of the subject tests, and they've also made changes to the AP exams. Uh, a few weeks ago, as you may remember, they have switched the AP exams uh, from being you know, generally multiple choice and free response to just a 45 minute free response exam, which you can take at home on the computer. And um, until Friday, we did not know any of the details on actually how the tests will be set up, um, you know, what questions there may be, and also kind of how many questions there would be as well, the dates, everything we did not know until Friday afternoon. So um, at around 1 p.m., the College Board released some information on their website. We're just going to go over for the um, AP Computer Science exam very, very quickly. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So over here, you can see that this is the um, this is College Board's website. And you can see here that they have this uh, main front page here, uh, support for AP students affected by school closures. If you click on learn more here, you'll see a page that has the updates for the um, AP exams and how they are affected by the COVID-19. So if you look down here, um, there is there are these two kind of pa pages here about this AP or about the actual exams. And actually for, um, for some reason, all of the information about the exams and the questions of the exam will be on the AP exam schedule page. So if you click view the schedule, you'll actually see the new dates and times for all of the AP exams, all of the ones that they offer. And if you see here, Computer Science A will be offered on Friday, May 15th. So it's, I believe, one week later compared to what it actually used to be. Uh, they pushed it down a week, and so it's now Friday, May 15th. And you can see that the time, so if you're on the East Coast, it will be 4 p.m. for you. If you're on you know, the Pacific Coast, the West Coast, it'll be 1 p.m., if you're on, if you're in between the country, maybe 2 or 3 p.m., depending on where you are. And um, we don't know if you are an international student. We don't actually know how the timing is going to be for international students. Right now, it seems that it's going to be at the same time as all of these, because this is all at the same time, right? Pacific time, 1 p.m. is the same as Eastern time, 4 p.m. There's a three-hour time difference. So there have been concerns of some people saying they may have to take the exam at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning if they're out of the country for, uh, for certain reasons. That, we are not necessarily sure how that's going to work. Uh, I'll be monitoring information from the College Board, and if, and if that information does come out, we, I, I will definitely share that uh, with you. By the way, a lot of information that I will be sharing with you about the AP exam is going to be on my Twitter. So in the description below, I have my Twitter. Um, it's, it's just the handle is at um, Ajay Gandecha with my name, right, all lowercase and no spaces. So you can go there. I do. I did post some of the information on this exam as well, you know, in a very recap. But I will be posting as as I find more information. I will be posting it out to you. Okay. So now the actual information about the exam itself. So if you go down here to the course specific exam information, you have information for every AP exam, right? Let's say you're taking, um, you know, English language. You can see here that you know you'll be doing a rhetorical analysis question. It'll be 45 minutes. All this information is here. But we're going to scroll down to Math and Computer Science, which is the page that we're going to be using for AP Computer Science. You can see here, this is where you can find the AP Computer Science A exam information. So if you click on it, uh, you'll see that they have the, uh, they have the main test date, which again is Friday, May 15th, as well as all the times again listed in a bulleted list here. And then you have the exam timing information. And then here you have the information on the questions, which is what I wanted to go over. So you're going to have two questions, two FRQ questions for this exam. And there may be multiple parts per question as previous exams used to be. So if you look at the previous 2019, which is the one that I actually took, 2018, 2017, and, and, be, and um, you know backwards, there's usually maybe one question and there may be an A or B, an A and B part or A, B and C part or just A part, something like that. So each question may have multiple parts to it. I'm assuming that that's how these are going to be as well. But question number one is a 25 minute 
uh, 25 minutes you have for question one. Question two, you have 15 minutes for. And also the exam weighting is not going to be a 50-50. There is a higher weight toward question one. 65% of the exam weight will be for question one, and 35% of the exam weight will be for question two. Now the actual questions, what they're going to be talking about is also slightly different. So if you remember in the, in the main exam, if you went onto the um, computer science exam page, in fact we can, so I'm just going to go up here and then if I just open this in a new tab and I go down to, um, let's see here, if I go to AP Central where I can see information for each class, I can go to AP Courses course and exam pages and scroll down to AP Computer Science A. So if you look at the exam over here, usually when you take the AP Computer Science exam, there are four main free response question types which are listed right here. The first one is going to be methods and control structures. So you will be asked to write program code to create objects of a class, call methods, and then satisfy things using expressions, conditional statements, and iterative statements. So what this means is this is pretty much units one through five. Everything from primitive types, reference type, the string class, the math class you may use. You may use loops, right, elementary loops, which is the iteration part, which is right here. And you may do Boolean expressions and if statements, which is unit three. And that is what they mean here by conditional statements. So unit uh, question one is always those kind of things, right? It relates to the first four units. Then you have question two, which actually write, which asks you to write your own class. And you, this is unit five material, so unit two and unit five material, and possibly unit, uh, possibly let's see, possibly unit nine material as well. But generally, unit two and five, which is going to be, um, you know, using objects and the introduction to classes was unit two, and then writing classes was unit five. So that that information is heavily used in question two, and it basically asks you to write your own class with a bunch of different methods and fields and stuff. Then you have question three, which is going to be array and array list. So this is going to be unit six for arrays and unit seven for array list. And um, it basically asks you to do many different things and pretty much manipulating um, one dimensional arrays as well as array list objects. And um, this is, this is one that is actually not as bad because a lot of people have a lot of practice with arrays uh, just because, you know, units one through four is more basic things and you, when you start getting into arrays is when you're really starting to tie things together. So a lot of people make connections in that unit and it becomes easier for them to remember as well. And then the last, que uh, and then the last question is usually a two dimensional array question, which is unit, uh, unit eight. So um, that's kind of where you have arrays within arrays. It's like a table of arrays, and then it asks you to manipulate that. Now, and then for the 2020 computer science exam, because of the changes that were made due to the COVID-19, the two question choices that there will be, the two questions will be array list for the question that had you have more time and is weighted more, and then methods and control structures for your second question. This is actually quite good. Um, I think that if they were to have done a classes, like classes in two-dimensional arrays, those are the two harder ones. Those are where people kind of mess up. Because if you think about it, if you cannot do arrays in array list, there's no way you'll be able to do two-dimensional arrays, right? You have to have a good understanding of arrays in order to um, kind of understand two-dimensional arrays. And also with classes, there are a lot of things where people mess up on, right? For getting keywords like the public, private, or static, right? Non-static, the void, returning stuff. A lot of people forget some of those things. They may even forget how to write it, you know, and all of those things you have to kind of remember. So the fact that they did not ask classes and they did not ask 2D arrays are actually pretty good for the test taker. Because these two, I would consider the two question types here are actually the easier ones. Array and array list being slightly easier because you can kind of choose between array or array list depending on what the question's asking. And they're generally easier to remember. You have more practice with them. And then methods and control structures, which is kind of the basics unit one through four. So definitely this is very good for the test taker. And um, because you don't have to write classes, because you don't have to do two dimensional arrays, it may be easier for people to score higher on these questions. And then you can see here that they have question descriptions 
And these pretty much are exactly what was over here that I explained. They just made it into uh, bullet points. And then you can see here that down here, they actually say that the units eligible for the 2020 exam is units one through seven. Again, this makes sense. These two questions are, this one is specifically asking unit six and unit seven, and this one will be borrowing from unit one through four. And of course, that does not mean that in the array and array list, they won't ask you to, for example, use loops or use if statements. All of those things are kind of basic elementary things, which you will learn and then get a lot of practice with and do well on as you continue out through the course. So that's pretty much the update for the 2020 um, AP exam for AP Computer Science. Again, you have two questions, one's 25 minutes, one's 15 minutes. Uh, the first question is going to be rated 65%. Um, as your weight, as well as it's going to be an array and array list question. The second question is going to be 15 minutes. It will be weighted 35% and it will be a question on methods and control structures. Remember the exam will be Friday, May 15th and the makeup day for the exam in case you missed that will be June 3rd. And actually I can look at my calendar here. June 3rd is a Wednesday, okay? June 3rd, 2020 is a Wednesday. So that those are the dates um, and all of the information for each question. Um, we also went over you know, the different types of questions, but um, that's pretty much the update. And I think that this is again, good for the test taker because the these kind of tie together all of the different units that people got to and it ignores kind of the unit um, the two-dimensional array stuff, which some people find a little bit more challenging, as well as writing classes, which you can kind of make uh, some silly mistakes on if you're not careful. All right, so uh, that's it. I, um, I hope that you found this helpful and useful in preparing for the 2020 exam. I will be working on more unit review videos. I've already done units one through four, um, which is going to be the, which were primitive types, using objects, boolean expressions of statements, and then the last unit, which was iteration. And I'm going to be throughout the week finishing up. So tomorrow, unit five will be posted, which will be um, on unit five is writing classes. And then I hope to get unit six, which is um, arrays and unit seven, which is array list out also within this week. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked it, um, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.